And this is the ubiquitous AR-15. There are some weapons, quite frankly, in my opinion, that are so dangerous that there really is no place in a safe and civil society for them. The Trudeau government has pissed me off for the last time, telling me that I'm not allowed to have an AR-15. Buy one, buy two, buy three, buy whatever you can. We have an American-style gun debate in Canada now. More guns, more gun violence. I remember the day. That day is clear in my mind. It was very quick. Three bullets, semi-automatic. And then I was on the floor. I remember Maclipin's foot leaving the classroom. I remember the door closing. I remember that. Long before mass shootings became almost daily news, there was l'école polytechnique. Mark Lepin, armed with a Ruger Mini-14 semi-automatic rifle, stormed the school hunting for who he called feminists. 14 women died, and Canadians learned the grim reality of gun violence. We're not immune. But the polarizing debate over gun laws wouldn't end here. It was just starting. So 30 years ago, as a young reporter, the biggest story I ever covered was right here at the Polytechnic. I'm not sure I've been back since. It still looks the same. One silver lining from that horrific day, Natalie Provo, the survivor. She tried to reason with Lepine, he tried to kill her. I tell, told him is that we're just we're, we are just women who study in engineer who study in, enge, in engineering and after I have tell him that maybe he answer something but I, I I didn't understand because he began to shut us. Where were you shot? Both of my legs, my foot. And my miracle, my forehead. You now look at the passage of a bullet. I have a little black hole just below my left eyebrow. The bullet was close enough to fracture my forehead, but not close enough to explode on my forehead. The maths for that are incredible. Mm -hmm. That's a miracle. The Montreal massacre moved more than half a million Canadians to sign petitions demanding a ban on semi-automatic weapons like the gun used at Polytechnique. Back in 1991, Heidi Rathjen took the petitions to Parliament Hill. She would quickly learn what she was up against. We have a very powerful gun lobby in Canada even though most Canadians don't know it because yeah. we don't have one main group um, like in the United States, the NRA. When the Liberals promised a sweeping gun ban and gun registry in 1994, the gun lobby awoke. The ban never happened. The registry later scrapped by the Harper Conservatives. It was a huge victory for the gun lobby. During the last election, the Trudeau Liberals promised to get assault weapons off our streets. What sounded like a ban wasn't. Enter Bill Blair. But there are some weapons, quite frankly, in my opinion, that are so dangerous that there really is no place in a safe and civil society for them. On the eve of this election, Blair telegraphed a ban on what he called assault-style firearms. A ban may seem like a political slam dunk. After all, a recent poll said 75% of Canadians support a ban on so-called assault weapons, including a majority of gun owners. With the election campaign underway, the debate now feels more like a showdown. If you look at it as, as a battle between two sides, who's winning? If we were in a democracy, we'd have a ban on assault weapons a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It's not happening. and. 
Uh, the only explanation is the strength of the gun lobby. The gun lobby is winning in the long run. It's getting worse. Do you see this as a very pivotal time right now in terms of future gun laws in Canada? I think every election, we always say, well, this is, a, you know, this is a really important time for gun owners. It has never been more true than it is right now. This is it. It's right now, right here. I came to this gun show near Toronto to try to learn why guns are so important to so many Canadians. We spent eight and a half billion dollars on hunting and sport shooting last year alone. Gun owners are your neighbor that shovels your driveway because you threw your back out yesterday. The mechanic that fixes your car, your those are who gun owners are. Yeah. Literally every walk of life, every ethnicity, every gender, every age group, we're, we are Canada. They're loud, proud, and armed to the teeth. Ownership of restricted and assault-style firearms has exploded in Canada, up 127% since 2005. Firearms like the AR-15, the kind of gun the Liberals are talking about banning. How would a ban go over in this crowd here? It would not go over well, because the majority of these people own handguns and or black rifles or AR-15s. So it's very difficult for us to accept that the actions of criminals should result in people like me or Tracy or anyone else at this show losing their guns. You have ministers of, uh, you know, border security um, talking it to the media and saying things like rifles that are designed to hunt humans. Ridiculous, hyperbolic. He knows that's not true. Bill Blair knows better. Why do you object to the fact that some people would call this a weapon? Because we don't use them as weapons. They're firearms. We weapons are things that are used to hurt people. 2.2 million Canadians use this as a sport and don't hurt anybody. Because a weapon can be a baseball bat. A weapon can certainly be a knife. Gun ranges are the only place where you can shoot restricted firearms like the AR-15. They can't be used to hunt, though the gun lobby wants that restriction scrapped. And this is the ubiquitous AR-15. This is the AR-15? This is an AR-15. So what is, what in your opinion is the most propagated myth about the AR-15? Oh, that it's some hugely powerful killing machine. It's not. Okay. You're loaded. back. Wow. And flip it over. There you go. Great. You're locked back. See what I mean? No recoil. Very little recoil. No, but I uh, can... Well, I'm new to this. I, I can just... I can... I can feel... I can feel the power. Have you ever brought politicians out here to do what we're doing today? <laughs> For seven consecutive years, we've had the parliamentary day at the range. Really? At Stittsville, we get over 100 MPs and senators out every time. Each time? And what's, uh, why do you do that? For exactly the reason we're doing it with you. Just to educate to, people? To educate them, yeah. yeah. And that education surely includes the political calculus of the gun lobby. Back us or we'll beat you. Do you think that the, the gun lobby has the power to make or break a government in Canada? Yes, absolutely, without question. We're doing rallies across the country. Um, we've been doing rallies across the country for a year now. Mm -hmm. You know, making people aware. What's the message of the, of the rally? To get out and vote. And defeat the Liberals. And to, well, defeat the Liberals, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, and you know, the, bearing in mind that from our community's point of view, they desperately deserve to be defeated. And you feel that you've been demonized by oh, the liberals? Oh, absolutely. Not just the liberals, though. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the media mm -hmm. is unmerciful to us. But, but you make it sound like you're the victims in this story. Absolutely. Totally. At one point in time, I think Canadians could have a dialogue on this and come up with common sense solutions. But that's no longer possible. The gun lobby wants to roll back many existing restrictions on firearms, firm believers in the slippery slope theory. This is not an assault weapon. 
This is a semi-automatic rifle, no different than a hundred others. And if this is gone, they'll come after the rest. Mm. It never ends. The ramifications of mandatory licensing. You must hold a firearms license to be in possession of your property or else you're committing a criminal offense. That is so offensive to so many Canadians. So as a result, the firearms issue, I hate to say it, has become an issue in Canada the way it's been in the United States for many years. We have an American-style gun debate in Canada now. Minister. Bill Blair certainly got that message during a cross-country consultation about a possible ban on handguns and assault-style weapons. At this town hall, the gun lobby was laying in wait. You should know better and should have tossed that mandate paper back in Trudeau's face. Every time the Liberals are in power, they come after us. There is no way you will ever tell the Canadian people they cannot have guns. We will keep them and we will hide them. Respectfully, I will say I consider gun ownership a right. Firearm ownership is a privilege. It's a, it's a privilege earned by each and every person in this room. But, but it is not a right to, to carry a firearm in this country. It's a privilege to be earned and all of you have done so. The Liberals retreated from an outright handgun ban, but left assault weapons on the table. From my own point of view, it, they lack courage. They lack the will to do something that we need to be done. So Natalie Provo took a stand. She quit from a federal firearms committee. Her patience with the Liberals was spent. Why are they being timid, as you say? Why? Because they will disturb those who vote for the, the, their, their right, their privilege to own the gun, any gun they want to own. Those people are vocal. Those people give money to um, support their candidate. We don't. Coming up, when the RCMP tried to ban this gun, the Mounties came head to head with the gun lobby. And guess who won? If you do not stand with us by saying we need to pass common sense gun legislation, you have chosen death. They came to the U.S. Capitol, hundreds of thousands of students drawing a line in the sand. End gun violence, ban so-called assault weapons. The March for Our Lives, as it was called, in response to this. I think about three in my classroom got hurt. I just saw blood everywhere. Valentine's Day 2018, a 19-year-old expelled student walks into a high school in Parkland, Florida, armed with an AR-15. He wounds 17 and kills 17, including Joaquin Oliver. Joaquin was a natural-born activist. Uh, he always uh, showed his intentions to, to fight injustice. And, and my son was 17 years old when he was shot down. You gotta spread the message. You gotta show what happened. In, in, my, in my case, uh, I try to stay with what I control better, and that's art. I place um, images of Joaquin um, holding it, his death certificate, um, and then putting some blood on it. Um, it's not a healing process, by the way. Do you think that Canadians would be naive if we were to just say that this is an American problem and assault weapons, we, we can manage them, we're, we'll be okay with them? I think you're very naive if you think that. Yes, 100%. Manuel Oliver and his wife Patricia are in Massachusetts, where the AR-15 and other so-called assault weapons have been banned. My biggest concern is that you'll burn out and you'll... Don't worry, it's not gonna happen. He's strategizing with John Rosenthal, a Boston businessman who pushed for stricter gun laws, including the ban. I know in the United States, it's a polarized debate. Right. So how did you find, to get this bipartisan support for these, these gun measures? 
by engaging with gun owners. Here in Massachusetts, we moved the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, you know, the banning guns or unlimited access to guns, to a moderate position that saves lives without banning most guns, except for assault weapons, which are the common denominator in all the mass shootings in America. The bottom line, Mark, more guns, more gun violence. More assault weapons, more mass shootings. It's a choice. Massachusetts has the second lowest rate of gun deaths in America. Rosenthal says that's the product of consensus. But consensus in Canada, it seems, is getting harder to come by. For the gun lobby, banning even one gun is one too many. In 2013, the RCMP firearms program wanted this gun ban, the CZ-858. The fifth estate obtained this video. The Mounties reveal how, after simple modifications, the rifle can be converted from a legal semi-automatic firearm to an illegal, fully automatic firearm, capable of firing multiple rounds with a single squeeze of the trigger. Tony Bernardo started working behind the scenes, lobbying the Harper government to override the RCMP. The Conservatives passed new legislation allowing the government to make the call on which guns would be prohibited, not the RCMP. Bernardo was given an autographed copy of the bill by then Public Safety Minister Stephen Blaney. Oh, thank you. Uh, got your copy. Thank you. Okay. Get the, get the picture. Out you go. <laughs> All right. I've worked with ministers all the way back to Anne McClellan. You're the best minister I've ever worked with. Well, thank you. <laughs> Bernardo says he's never seen the RCMP video showing the gun firing in fully automatic mode. So we showed him. So this doesn't represent to you then the potential for no. a, a, a public danger no. a, a, and, and a rifle that shouldn't no. be in the hands Finding of Canadians. one that's been converted. There wasn't one. Their concern is public safety, isn't it? I can't it? answer that. I don't know what their concern is. But isn't this sort of where we've ended up now when we're talking about the, the, the current discussion about firearms in Canada? That there, there's a lack of trust, there's a lack of consensus, right. that where, where you don't even trust the RCMP. Absolutely. Uh, uh, yes, there's a huge lack of trust. There's a gigantic gulf, and we didn't make it. Who made it? They did. When New Zealand announced it was banning so-called assault weapons after a gunman killed 51 in two mosques, word spread quickly, Canada would be next. Speaker, I'm told on good authority that uh, the Prime Minister has a secret plan to ban legal firearms. As I believe every member of this House will agree, there is no greater responsibility for any order of government than the safety of their citizens and the protection of their kids. And we are prepared to consider whatever measures will be effective in doing so. If you don't have an AR-15, even if you do, and you've got room in your budget, Go get another one. Buy one, buy two, buy three, buy whatever you can. The and gun lobby pounced, launching a social media run on guns, loaded with a political message. You let them know that Bill Blair sent you. I don't see any public safety issue with the AR-15s, so I have proudly bought an AR-15 because the government says I can't have one. The Trudeau government has pissed me off for the last time, telling me that I'm not allowed to have an AR-15, that they're going to ban them. That's not going to happen, so I am now a proud owner of an AR-15. Guns designed for killing the largest amount of people in the shortest amount of time have no place in Canadian society have no place in our communities. That is why we are banning military-style assault weapons. After months of hinting at a ban on so-called assault weapons, the Liberals finally committed to one, if re-elected. There are weapons that have been designed for military purposes. They were designed for armies, for soldiers to kill enemy combatants. They weren't designed for hunting, they were designed for military purposes. And therefore we propose to ban and prohibit those weapons. Firearm ownership in this country is not a right, it's a privilege. And it's a privilege earned by those Canadians who are willing to abide by all of our rules and regulations for responsible firearm ownership.
Do you believe that Canadians have a right to bear arms? Absolutely. Would you like to see this actually, the Constitution changed to reflect the right to bear arms in Canada? There's been a lot of talk about that and a lot of talk about property rights. And you see those as one and the same, that, that right, the right to bear arms is in fact a property right. Firearms are property yeah. in this country and that, I think that's something that governments often forget. When you talk about though the Americanization of this debate, there must be some Canadians that fear with fewer gun restrictions, we could end up in a similar situation to the United States where there is there guns on the street, gun violence increases, mass shootings increase. That's the fear that a lot of Canadians have. I think Canadians have to look at where are those restrictions being put right now? Where are Canada's gun laws focused? They're not focused on criminals or lunatics. They're focused on people who want to be law-abiding. They're focused on people who go through the whole regime of getting a license, getting registrations when it comes to handguns and restricted firearms. Well, that's exactly the case of Alexandre Bissonnette, the kid who walked into the mosque in Quebec City. Yes. Legal firearm owner. So I ask you the question, how do Canada's restrictions on firearms prevent that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. Apparently they don't. In 2017, Bissonnette shot six dead with a legal firearm. In 2006, Kim Veer Gill, legal gun owner, killed one and injured 16 at Montreal's Dawson College. And of course, Mark Lapine, yet another legal gun owner. I really know that most of the people who own gun, who own permit, who go hunting, who, who are sports shooters, most of them are goodwill. I am sure of that. But what I'm afraid is that what they are playing with is it ob extraordinarily dangerous. You know that. In my flesh. Do you feel it takes a massacre to get Canadians to remember this issue? How many will it take? Polytechnic was not enough, obviously. And the Quebec mosque, it's never enough. It takes courage. This was uh, the firearm that was uh, used in uh, the uh, Lacole Polytechnic uh, murders in Montreal in 1989. That at the time, people said, let's ban this weapon. Why isn't it banned? Why should it be banned? Let's ban this weapon, why? Because it was used in one tragedy? It's a political issue. It's an ideological issue. And unfortunately, that's the way it is in Canada today. But we're perfectly willing to fight it on that basis.